Welcome back to Plain and Safe. It's always great to be here today. And I really wanted to talk about writing your own story. So I continue to do my journey of following individuals, getting to meet really incredible people, and I am writing their story. And as I'm writing individual stories and I'm following individuals and, um, you know, just learning more about other people's lives, I'm starting to realize, you know, more about my story and I've been through this process helping others tell their story. So what I recommend you all do is I want you all and I highly encourage you all to write your story in a third person. And I'll explain that in a second. So I've done this practice quite a few times, uh, particularly with some of my students. Um, this was a really cool healing process at uh, one of the Native American schools I work at, um, one institution that I work at. It was just really cool to, to see their perspective as well. And we kind of did storytelling, but of um, our own stories. So I really want you all to, you know, I recommend take a moment at some point in your day over the weekend, whenever you get a chance, a, a quiet time. Well, if you get 20, 30 minutes, maybe even more, it's almost you're going to like journal. You're going to write your story, but in a third person. And what do I mean by that? So many times we as individuals don't get enough credit and not that, you know, we constantly need to be like, oh my God, you're so amazing. We don't get enough credit for what we do right we don't get credit for like hey you know are your kids always saying like thanks mom thanks dad you're the best for all you know thank you for paying for this meal thank you for paying for the house thank you for keeping us surviving right or even for those of you that are doing uh, extra work to get to your goals of whatever you are trying to accomplish it's really hard it's definitely hard right and during those journeys most of the time you just face criticism and you get a lot of people doubting you, but there's not really anyone saying, wow, that you're doing a really great job. Like, hey, that no sleep you got, that's amazing that you did that. You sacrificed your sleep, you sacrificed your happiness to get to that point. So we don't hear that a lot, all right? And it's just important to um, write your story out in a third person. And what? And, and as I say that, what do I mean by that is like, if you were going to tell your story, um, you know, some of you are not parents, but for those of you that are parents, maybe you're reading your kids a, a story, you know, a book, and it's always like, oh, this person did this and they overcame this and now they're here. That kind of, that kind of aspect of writing the story, right? We always tell the great accomplishments we have and what we, uh, what that individual overcame. We read people's books. We... We read them to kids, we read them ourselves, and we're always inspired by others. But I want to put you to the challenge, have you all been inspired by yourselves? And this was a healing process for myself as well, but have you been inspired by yourselves? So what I always tell, um, what I encourage is like, okay, we're gonna write a story about yourself, but in a third person. So for example, mine would be, you know, there was a little baby girl born on July 9th, 1985, uh, to a, a couple, a young couple of these parents and they, and she had one older sibling. This little girl had a wonderful life growing up in the beginning. It was great times. You know, there, she was very close to her mother, her father, her brother, and this little girl was always so happy. But at the age of six, tragedy occurred. You know, the little girl's father, you know, you know, Veronica's father left the household and it caused the family to have a really hard situation. Veronica was vulnerable to the uh, harshness of the world and vulnerable to, you know, the impacts of, of adult men, right? I'm gonna get a little graphic, not too much, but you write that story. So I'm starting to tell some of my story of how my perspective, if I was watching my life as a movie on the outside, watching myself 
as a little girl as a baby and I'm out there on the, on the outskirts and I'm, I'm just watching this movie, I'm going to see the issues that this movie faced in, in my life, right? I'm going to see the um, impacts that I felt, you know, when my dad left the household. When he left, I mean, he left, right? Like, homeboy, peace out. <laughs> um, I'm going to see that little girl crying. I'm going to see her mother having to go from having, you know, a, a wonderful household to being with no money. We're going to see this family transition from wealth to poverty. I'm going to, as I'm writing my story and telling it in a third person, I'm going to see this little girl be bullied. I'm going to see this little girl uh, being criticized. I'm going to see this little girl being put down all the time. Okay. Again, I'm telling the story, right? Technically, this is a true story. It's my story. I'm going to see all these. I'm going to be able, as I'm writing my story, to to encounter all those difficult times. Now, I do have to give you a little warning that um, anytime people do this, it's it's almost like a therapy, right? I get students writing. I have, I recommend you write it out, right? Write it in, in that third person of a story of yourself from when you were born. And um, I get people crying, you know, I get them to really feel the impacts of their story. And I'm not trying to get sentimental. I'm not trying to get people to uh, cry or anything of that nature. But as I continue to write that story, or as you continue to write your story, writing your own story, you're going to see the the triumphs. You're going to see the the greatness, all those obstacles that that little boy or that little girl overcome, you know, overcame to get to where they are at now. So if I continue to write my story, I would see that this little girl named Veronica had faced all kinds of, of harshness in this world. This little girl Veronica decided to move away from her household because of her own um, issues at home and decided that the only way that she can attempt to be successful in life or have a chance is to try education. You know, this, this, this girl, Veronica, as a teenager now, she moves away, faces this, you know, house, um, out of the household. She faces the world of the reality. She's gonna, she's out there, um, trying to go to school. She's working three jobs at a time. She's not sleeping very much. She still has little money. She doesn't feel like she's ever going to make it, right? And have you ever read a story, like I said, to your kids and you start to see the accomplishments? Well, writing your story in that third person, you'll be able to identify all those incredible moments when you landed a job. Even if it's your first job, it's a great accomplishment, right? Even if it's a job you're not as happy in there, it's part of your story. You know, you if you can see yourself on the outside looking in at your own life, you can give yourself that credit of, wow, this person, Veronica, you know, Emmanuel, Steve, uh, you know, anyone, right? This person, whoever we're writing about, and we can see how much they've accomplished and how awesome they are to overcome all their obstacles that they had to, to get to that point. And I think it's, it's important to do that. It's important to tell your story to yourself, even if no one's listening, but to say it that way and see it that way. So that way, you know, what you're doing is, is powerful. You know, that your, your story, your path is wonderful and it teaches you to appreciate yourself because this world doesn't give us enough appreciation. I go on this whole bid when I tell students, right? You know, especially because the, the classes I teach, I have a lot of parents in my, my classes. Um, I teach community college, so I have anywhere from, you know, people straight out of high school to people who are retired, returning back to school or things of that nature. So. You know, uh, I give my story a little bit as far as like, uh, for example, you know, my husband's a stay at home father, right? He does an amazing job and, and people praise him all the time for being a saint for staying home. Now, mind you, I, he is a saint for staying home. Definitely is because I don't know how he does it and I don't know how anyone else does it. It's hard. But 
Um, I don't get, women don't get praised for staying home. Stay at home moms, there is no good job moms for taking care of your kids. You know, it's just expected. Out of societal norms, it's just expected. You know, if, um, if, if we look at it that aspect, so women don't get praised for staying home with, with their kids. Now, if a woman's staying home watching her kids and the man is out working and um, providing for the household, the man gets praised for providing for that household. People are like, wow, that's amazing. That's so awesome that you're able to support your family. If a woman is supporting the family, she doesn't get the same praise, right? And so it's we definitely have these different norms, societal roles that just, it's, I mean, it's pretty much bullshit for sure, but it is a real thing and it can get frustrating and it can get hard and you can feel, you know, most people feel um, not valued and underappreciated. So when I talk to people all the time, it's more of trying to hear their story, know that their story is valid and that their story um, deserves praise and their accomplishments mean something, you know. Most of us, if not all of us, we feel that we are just this little person in this world that doesn't do much of an impact. Or maybe if I wasn't here, no one would notice, right? And so it's about time we notice ourselves. I, I think it's important to stop waiting to be noticed by others and to make sure that you are noticed by yourself. Recognize who you are, notice your strength, notice how amazing you are. No one else is gonna be able to do that for you. I discovered this a long time ago. I, I don't need to go around looking for praise. I just, you know, I can look myself in the mirror and realize what I'm doing is amazing. What I am, I am a badass. I have to tell myself this stuff, but it's something that we need. It's needed, it's important because um, we live in a world where it's too easy to get depressed. It's too easy to feel sad. And I just have to let you know that those feelings are valid and it's okay to feel that at times too. It's okay to go through those emotions, but it's how do you recover? How do you rebound and get back and progress and, and get back to your goals? You know, this is a long marathon. Hopefully it's a marathon of art, your journey. Um, hopefully you live a long life. And so when you're on that marathon, you're going to get tired. You're going to want to quit. And it's for you yourself to tell yourself that it's going to be okay. You are a badass. You are going to do amazing. So write your story. I can't push that enough. I highly recommend anyone listening, write your story in a third person. Talk about this little boy, this little baby boy, this little baby girl born. Go through those chapters. Go write it. It's going to be a long writing, right? We might not get every single um, life experience that you had in there, but you'll be able to recognize when you're writing what was the most impactful. What was the area that that little boy or little girl got hurt, got their feelings hurt? Where was that moment in the story where they were um, criticized or bullied and that made them, you know, become an introvert or made them not talk back or made them be overstepped on? Where does that happen in the story? And as the story continues, as you're writing your own story, where does that transition happen? Where, where that, that little baby boy, little baby girl transitions into, a, you know, a young kid, a teenager, an adult? a parent maybe, where do those things occur? Give yourself that credit and know that story of that, of that little child as they um, are mostly adults now. How incredible that story is. It's important to know your story, write your story, and feel free to always share your story. There's people out there I met, um, you know, I was out this weekend and I like to, I call it, I like to uh, make friends for, you know, I only have one day, one night friends, like, because I don't have enough time to really build friendships anymore. I have my few friends, but you know, every time I meet these incredible people, I meet so many incredible people that um, it's, you know, I wish I had the time to keep connected with everyone. I just don't, but I met this wonderful lady. Her name was Anne. 
and uh, we met on the airplane. She was from Hawaii and she was talking about her two beautiful adult uh, children, um, adult women children, and just talking about all the incredible things that her daughters are doing. And I had to pause her a little bit and tell her about the incredible things that she has done to get her daughters there because, you know, we don't give ourselves enough credit as a parent that, hey, you was, you know, your sacrifices that got your kids to schools, your sacrifices that were able to, you know, pay for this, to push for that. And I think many times we don't give ourselves credits for the sacrifices we had to do to help others blossom and shine. So it was just really cool to to meet her and talk with her and discovered that she was pretty awesome herself. She had her own little business and uh, we exchanged information. I'm hoping I can interview her at some time. But it's just amazing. You get to meet people, you get to meet people from around the world. She's traveled around the world and, you know, just to, you know, for that hour we were together, just share, uh, listen to her story. And, uh, you know, by her telling her story, I was able to acknowledge how amazing she is. So don't, you know, hesitate to write your story, share your story, and listen and ask other people about their stories. It helps to know that we're all amazing. We have amazing abilities and um, just to recognize that, appreciate that, and, you know, value yourself and value others. As always, it's always a pleasure to be here. Please feel free to share your story with me. Send me your story. Uh, feel free to send me an email at plainandsave000 at gmail.com. Or uh, please feel free to send it uh, on Insta chat or anything of that nature. I am available. I love to hear this. I love to, to hear your stories. And who knows, maybe we can share a story in this podcast as well. Please uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And until the next time, y'all take care. Bye now. Mm -hmm.